ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cinema Grotesque. I'm your host, Travis McKeithen. I am a co-host, a- Igil Anderson. And welcome to the show where we watch movies that... Uh, <laughs> they are something that will put to celluloid. Exactly. At some point in time, somebody put some effort and some time and some thought into making these movies, or at least we're led to believe. So today, for our first episode, we have something special. Very, very special. Uh, what well, don't you... I, I, thought, I thought of the name Cinema Grotesque, and the, uh, the uh, you know, dictionary meaning is, you know, uh, yeah, so from Italian, grotesque, uh, grotesco, uh, is literally of a cave. Okay. So that That's was right. kind of that was kind of the uh, thing. It's it's something like from deep, from something like pulled up from deep in the earth that that should probably have been forgotten. But yeah. for this first movie, we have something generally grotesque <laughs> in the modern sense of the word. Exactly. So a little bit of background. Um, we kind of pull movies at random. This one was introduced to us by our fine uh, co-staffer over at Shatter.media, Dave Deca- DiCapio, in which he posted a poster that I had never seen before. Uh, and uh, might as well bury the lead uh, for a movie called Star Babe, which if I had to imagine just looking at the poster, I would say it looks like Debbie Does Dallas mixed with Star Wars. What are your thoughts, Eagle? Uh, you know, the, the poster sort of gives that. Uh, it seems like, you know, Star uh, Bimbo's in space. That's pretty accurate, yep. But, yeah, but uh, the reality was a lot more filthy than just, you know, an innocent space themed porno. <laughs> yeah. To get it right out of the, uh, get it right out there in the open. Neither one of us knew this was a, just full on porn. Whenever we decided no, to watch I, it. I thought, I thought this was more like a, a skin flick. Exactly. It was going to have breasts. It was going to have breasts. It was going to have mock sex. Uh, so we're like, cool, this should be funny. Um, however, <laughs> And what we came to find out is that, uh, yep, just pretty much uh, full-on porn with a little bit of story. Full-on 70s porn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that bush cannot be uh, forgotten. Just the bush, the lighting, the sets, the music. The tinfoil like, walls. <laughs> the Everything about this movie screams like 1977. Yep. And yes, in 1977, producer-director George Lucas created the Star Wars trilogy. He changed the way we looked at movies. But that same year, director Jack Gennaro produced Star Babe in an effort to capitalize on the craze and in no way whatsoever changed the way that anyone looks at porno except in disgust. Yep, that uh, that is a pretty accurate uh, interest. I mean, in fact, you can barely find anything about this thing on the Internet. I mean, the fact that we were both able to find a working and I use working very, very lightly there because this fucking audio, this audio track that we've got on either one of us. Absolutely horrible. Had to listen to this multiple times to make sure I was hearing the correct things that I was, which, yeah, they, they say some horrible shit. You kind of wish you didn't. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah, it's like, yeah. So it was it was recorded in 1977 with probably a potato for a microphone, and <laughs> then we go through like eight generation burns. So, like the end results sound like someone muffling, someone that has been gagged trying to talk into a a dictaphone. From 1981. Yeah, kind of what I imagined as I was listening to the whole thing is uh, the whole mo- the majority of the movie, I'd say close to 80 to 90 percent has been ADR, which is essentially putting in audio after the movie's already been made, probably because they had even worse audio. But what the audio reminded yeah, but, me of. But it, it, like the ADR audio was still terrible. Absolutely like, horrible. It was not done in any sort of studio uh, in any sort of studio. 
I imagine it being done in a back alley bathroom, like not even like a real bathroom, but a porta potty on the side of somewhere. Somebody just took literally like just the shittiest Casio recorder from the eighties hit record and say, just say whatever you'd like here. doesn't really matter that much. We've already got the seventies. Seventies. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, they might've had those in the seventies. I don't know. Who cares if, who cares about my bad analogy? But, uh, yeah, it, 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 needless to say, Star Babe, um, even on IMDb, it, it barely has any information. Uh, here is the entire premise. According to IMDb, the Star Angels are sent to the planet Phallus to prevent a takeover of Earth. That's it. That's all he got. <laughs> But it's pretty accurate, to be 100% honest. It, it, this well, one, Yeah, it, 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 it lacks a certain nuance. This one, uh, well, this one isn't very deep on plot. We'll start with that. It's, uh, it, it, is, it is not very deep on plot, but surprisingly deep on plot <laughs> at the same time. It, yeah, it, um, it is how can we propel our characters from one sex scene with a person to the next sex scene with... <laughs> Maybe not a person. So this is like just the first three seconds of the movie. I just had to stop and and just gather my thoughts because this is brought to us by Super Bits Productions. The highest quality and, of productions that you can get, by the way. And, and the, 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 studio, the studio logo is accompanied by like a marching trumpet, like something out of the Civil War era, like Superbits Productions. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it quite sends you for a loop. So yeah, shortly after that, we get introduced to the three main characters who are aboard, as I said before, uh, or aboard their ship, the Orgasm. Which yes, that the is spaceship the spaceship Orgasm. Exactly. It's a fine name. I can imagine when it was uh, initially sent out to space, there was a nice ceremony. There was champagne uh, busted <laughs> on the side of the orgasm, because that's really the only way yeah, to launch yeah, a ship. Like you, have, you have your Enterprise, you have your Voyagers, and you have your Orgasms, all great spacefaring vessels' names. Yep. Very good progression as well. So on this fine so, ship yeah. orgasm. Well, you're getting a bit ahead of yourself because this movie, like after you get through the, the amazing studio logos, um, you get just 30 seconds of just flying through space. It looks like that screensaver you had in the 90s. <laughs> well, to be just fair. 30 seconds of that with nothing. And then we are... Uh, Introduced to the the very thin premise we have by a disembodied god voice. Yep, gotta love those voiceovers. And they say that in the year 2080, God created three lovely space maidens. So, fuck you, evolution. Yep. That, that, that proves it all wrong there. So, yeah, we've got it going on so far. Science and and yeah, so those three space maidens are, are Star Babe, Twinkle Toes, and Milky Way. Exactly, very original. And uh, yeah, they they do not at all sound like they are My Little Pony characters, except if you think about it for more than a couple seconds. <laughs> so yes, we are introduced. They are on the. Uh, the spaceship Orgasm, traveling through Sector 69, mm -hmm. because it's a pawn, get it? Yeah, we need pawns. And, and they are all wearing sort of space bikinis with leggings Man. and an amount of body glitter that can only be called extravagant. And extreme. <laughs> it's it's I, I just really felt bad for the person that had to clean up the set when they were done because there must have been glitter everywhere. And then he got some on him and then he went home and then glitter got there and he was like finding it two years later. 
I can imagine so. The amount of glitter that was in multiple people's ass cracks intentionally probably led to unintentional ass crack glitter as well for the poor production staff that worked on Star Babe. <laughs> And yeah, so yeah, so they're wearing that. But the piece of the resistance is that they are all wearing football helmets made for children because they do not cover their ears even. Yeah, and they have these visors that are clearly made from cardboard and you know those filters you can get for lights. Exactly. They really use the video game ideology of women. The best way you can be prote protected against the elements is less clothes. And, but if you have to yes, wear something, make sure it's, it's a plastic space helmet. Clothes. Exactly. It's very futuristic. We'll learn about it in three years. And yeah, so we are, we are introduced to them on the starship orgasm and among, I, I, I just had to stop the movie for a second because among the instruments on the various consoles the th three women have is a pocket watch glued to a, a console. Yep. You know, just it, so the guys can keep, keep time. I, I, I don't even, it's not even a stopwatch. It's a pocket watch. A pocket stopwatch. Probably used in running events. I don't think it had the ticker, you know, which you get with with stopwatches. You just it just was a pocket watch that showed the time. But it it will get more important as we as we move on. Astoundingly, exactly. So they are on a secret mission to the planet Thallus. Which, as you could imagine, is uh, shaped like uh, uh, Waterworld. I I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to no, explain it's, this. No, it's just shaped like a planet. There's no reason why you would call a planet <laughs> phallus. Because well, it's not phallic at all. Well, if you use your imagination, it's quite phallic. <laughs> but yeah, so Star Babe, we got some exposition about where they're going. And... Uh, they are almost there, but still not quite. So Star Babe sends Twinkle Toes and Milky Way <sighs> for a break. <laughs> and the two, and yeah, they, they, he, she sends them on a break. Uh, you've been working hard. Go take some time off. I'll manage the ship. I'm the captain or whatever. Yep. And. As any two women that have been trapped on a spaceship for an unknown amount of time would do, they let out. Yep. Quite a bit. And quite a bit. And it has the most uncomfortable shot in cinema and pornographic history combined, which is just a zoomed-in extreme close-up of a mouth, a tongue... And pubic hair. Yep. And, and not, not and just then, regular pubic hair. This is full-on 70s bush. This 70s is pubic never hair. never trimmed at all. This is grown for the world to see. This is au natural. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, then it zooms in even tighter, so you can't even see the lips anymore. Yeah, it's... um. This is the whole thing. We're talking about this right now. This is probably the only thing I'm going to remember about this entire movie. And well, in all honesty, a day. But yeah, they literally created a zoom in that I have yet to see in any other movie, any porn, any regular movie, any video game. You're not supposed to zoom in so far. Like in Photoshop, when you open it up, you, you zoom in nothing too far, you get pixels. <laughs> Yeah, nothing should be viewed this close up, except maybe microbes. Yeah, if this was a doctor's if, if, inspection, if, I could understand it. If if they would have gone in any further, you would literally have microscopic vision. Yep, and uh, and needless to say, you know, you know how you see sometimes in nature documentaries, you see a uh, the fox hunts its prey silently, but deadly. And then, you know, it cuts to the fox eating a rabbit or something. And it's all just shut up close and just 
it's terrible and it's it's depressing and it makes you feel horrible about how cruel nature is and <laughs> what what little hope mankind has against such elements. This feels like that. Except a bit more depressing. <laughs> <laughs> because somehow a director thought, oh, yeah, get in on those pubes. Pretty much. I mean, that's the only type of direction I can imagine when watching this because it starts out like a regular uh, lesbian porn. It, it starts out, it's showing the two, one mounting the other, the other one going in for the oral sex because that's what they do. Um, but then, yeah, it just keeps getting closer and closer. It almost feels like a <laughs> horror movie. Like the the cameraman themselves was were stalking these poor ladies up until <laughs> it would be like literally if I, if we were within kissing range of each other, that's how close the camera was to this woman licking the other woman's <laughs> vagina. Uh, and I, I've been uncomfortable to say the least. And I've watched yes. a lot of porn. <laughs> so I've this, watched a lot of porn. I've watched a lot of terrible horror films but i just i just had to stop <laughs> for when like at this moment oh well not particularly at this moment because after the one who is the owner of the pubic hair mm -hmm. has an orgasm uh there's a, a man in a gorilla suit <laughs> called Lugi. yep who is sort of who is kind of supposed to be some kind of a Chewbacca stand-in? Very poor man, Chewbacca. I mean, this is just a monkey suit, like you would imagine yes, somebody wearing. Yes, this is a, a visible gorilla suit with a zipper on front, a visible zipper on front. Very visible. And he's just passed out next to the bed when where they are doing their business. So he wakes up. And what do they do? Well, of course, they start sucking on his penis. Yes. A bestiality added to this fine sci-fi epic. And at the, it was at this point in time I had to stop the movie and just I couldn't take it anymore. The, the bush mouth scene was had literally made me queasy. <laughs> It had made me sick to my stomach. And then they started going down on a man in a gorilla suit. And I just said, I can't handle this. I I can't go back. I can't continue. <laughs> this must stop. So I did. And I came back to it, I think, a day later. <laughs> and do you know what the sound I made was when I uh, resumed the film. It was... Oh. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <sighs> See, so... <laughs> yeah, the difference between us and where you were getting disgusted, I was just like, yeah, I've, I've seen this. Yeah, this is, uh, this is horrible uh, and done it, porn. <laughs> it wasn't... It, like, wasn't the fact that, like, a woman had pubes or that a woman was going down on another woman or even the fact that they then continued on to perform oral sex on a man in a gorilla suit. It wasn't any of that. It was just how it was all shot. Yeah, it, it, that's one thing is they really did just find somebody is like, hey, do you have a camera? Yes, I do. Um, have you ever used it? Nah. OK, well, come on. We're starting to make a movie. <laughs> See, the, now this lady is, is giving this all other lady oral pleasure. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to uh, record that. Are you in close? Um, yeah, I guess. Going closer. <laughs> no, nope, still closer. Are you, is she literally banging her head against the camera? No. Well, then you have to get closer. That's how, that's how movies are shot. Uh, <laughs> this is porn. God damn it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, no, I said, uh, the whole thing is up till now. I was, I was kind of worried about the quality of this. I mean, even through watching the lesbian scene, it was like, okay, this is kind of silly, but whatever. But as soon as the man in the gorilla suit, uh, comes out to get a blowjob, um, 
And the fact that you can see the zipper and everything like that. And then you see this very, very white penis come out of a pre-made hole in the gorilla suit. That's when I was like, yeah, I'm going to stick with this movie till the end. This is uh, this is something special here. Yes. Well, uh, it's funny that you, you should me- mention the Caucasian penis. Yes. Because the man in the gorilla suit speaks like... I don't want to be insensitive here, but he speaks like a disco, like a disco going black man. That's a a stereotype. uh, He's he's one step away from calling someone a jive turkey. And I'm quite surprised that didn't happen, just considering (laughs) the dialogue itself was literally... uh, just imagine any type of stereotypical 1970s movie where they actually gave a black man dialogue. That's kind of how the whole thing was. It was just like, yo, um, and uh, yeah, suck this dick. I'm not even going to attempt oh, yeah. to, I'm not going to attempt to uh, recreate this voice just for the plain fact. I don't want to be that guy. No. Oh, okay. I'm not going to be that guy either, but yeah, it was, I'm not going to say Disco N-Word, but that's what it sounded like. Yeah, that's about right. If I, if I had to think of a word to where how they <laughs> chose to give this gorilla, or man in a gorilla, white man in a gorilla, a voice, it was, you know what? Stereotype. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the worst thing is that just I know in my hearts of hearts that it was performed by a totally Caucasian man. Well, there's no question. I mean, that that was no a very average white penis that came out of the gorilla well, suit. Well, I mean, it, it could because everything was ADR. It could have been fucking anyone doing those lines. That is true. But it was definitely a white guy doing a black guy disco voice. Yep. <laughs> this was someone imitating Dolomite. At best, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it there. This is getting dark. Uh, well, let's move on to the other dark stuff. Of the oh, movie. it's going to get darker. <laughs> it's going to get darker. Just not Don't in shade and tone. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, yes, of course, the walls are just flat out tinfoil. Yeah, it's a little bit scratched. It was that, that moment I realized, oh, the walls are literally tinfoil. Because that's the future. Yes. Tinfoil equals future. Exactly. So, okay, we so, got the, that silly sex out of the way, both human and uh, gorilla sex out of gorilla the way. Gorilla Wookiee. Exactly. There you go. Uh, but then they cut away in the middle of the scene, and it's over. Yep. They don't even have the common fucking decency to show an ejaculating penis. In a man in a gorilla suit, which I've never seen well, before. Well, I mean, it's a pawn. I agree. You've got a penis. You gotta show and ejaculate. That's how you know it's over. That's pretty much how it works. At this point in time, although they showed a lot more than they usually show in like sexy type movies that aren't porn, at this point in time, I did. I still wasn't sure. I was like, maybe it's not a straight up porn. Maybe it's just a very risque erotic film uh, that happens to be. <laughs> I knew that was fucking porn. <laughs> so yeah, it, it took till later. We'll get to that. Uh, but yes, I just thought like, why? I just thought it was just gross and attitude uh, that they like messed up the shot and couldn't use the ejaculation shot because it looked like shit or something. That's a possibility as well. So anyway, the starship orgasm finally arrives at the planet Phallus. Yep. And, uh, well, I mean, yes. Oh, Yes. They are entering the uh, the uh, planet's atmosphere, and you have what you what you call in sci-fi space turbulence. <laughs> That's when usually the camera shakes or it tilts to one side, and all the actors sort of fling themselves to one side to give the illusion that there is actual movement going around. Exactly. That's what you would see. And I mean, in in Star Trek or even in Star Wars, stuff like that, they they put a little bit of time and effort into faking that there is currently turbulence on a still set. Yes. But they don't even bother. 
in this movie, <laughs> they just have the actresses slightly jiggle. Yeah. Oh, we are entering the atmosphere, and then they sort of just do a little jiggle. Exactly. Like, oh, th- there is something going on. And it would have been laugh worthy if it was just like maybe okay, well they're just shaking their breast or something like that. No, they were just kind well, of spazzing out a little bit, just kind of shaking. Well, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't even a full on shake. It was <laughs> just kind of a jiggle. Yep, just a not little just bit. through the breast, just the the whole body sort of jiggling. <laughs> and yes, I I wrote down. This is the most unengaging atmosphere entry scene in cinema history. Which I would have to imagine is probably the case. But yes, yeah, so needless to say, that goes on for way too long. <laughs> uh, yes, them and, just they finally, and they finally land on the planet. And uh, so we get, you know, sort of the, the 10 4 on what's going on. It's that someone has secret plans to do something. We don't know what, but someone has secret plans and they're going to get him. How are they going to get him? Well, like Star Babe says, all men in the galaxy want the same thing. Pussy. Exactly. To which... Either Twinkle Toes or Milky Way replies, it's never made clear who is Twinkle Toes and who is Milky Way. And it really doesn't matter. They are totally interchangeable. But yes, one of them replies, yeah, especially when it's hot and wet. Mm -hmm. So this is when you definitely know that this is a sex movie that you're watching because of the amazing dialogue. (laughs) And just the delivery is so in- unenthusiastic. It's someone saying words without knowing what they mean. Yeah, it, I would not have been surprised if this entire movie was actually made in a different country and the whole thing was dubbed over in English. Because they did seem yeah, to not, not quite understand what was going on the entire time. Not Not surprising at all. But, Travis, have you ever wondered... What the anus bar looks like. You know, I've spent many a nights uh, right before sleep, usually. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't give it enough credence to enter my dreams. But I sit and think to myself, um, if there was a bar called the anus, what would I imagine? Um, and to be quite honest, up until I watched Star Babe, I, my, my preconceived notions were totally off. Because yeah, I, I was I was thinking like something along like you have like like the uh, alien queen Leia from Aliens, you know, you have, you know, <clears throat> sweeter like doors that open and close. Oh, that would be and amazing! Everything kind of grows, but no, our 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 heroines clearly also wonder what the anus bar looks like. Mm-hmm. So we go there on the Planet Palace, and apparently it's the number one pinball joint in the galaxy. It's uh, where well, where werewolf aliens smoke cigars, and Lady David Bowie with an afro is a nude dancer. And what's the most popular pinball machine in the far flung future of two thousand one hundred? You ask. Yep. Of course, it's the evil Knievel pinball machine. He'll never die. I mean, in all honesty, he is he has been seen as a god, obviously, in the uh in the extended future. So yeah, that's that's the the only entertainment you can get in the anus. Um the anus <laughs> only has a few pieces of entertainment, whether it's the dancing naked lady with, uh, we spoke about glitter earlier, but this is where they just didn't give a fuck anymore. They well, literally I mean, it's just lady, it's lady, lady, David Bowie. David Bowie is obviously 70% glitter, just like the humans are 70% water. 
I imagine that with her character, though, because the whole thing is, once again, we mentioned this is a late 70s movie. And, of course, everybody knows of the old situation of the 70s Bush. So it was it was never surprising whenever you see a woman that has quite a bit of pubic hair. This woman, the uh, female David Bowie, didn't, however. And uh, it was a little bit off-putting because in the place of pubic hair, it literally looks like the makeup department grabbed handfuls of glitter and glue and just flung them at her private area. I mean, and just kept doing it for a solid 30 minutes up to the point where it was way past degrading at that point in time. It was more of a sport by the time they got through throwing the glitter and glue at this woman's vagina. So yeah, that just to give you a little bit of a heads up of of the glitter department was definitely the best paid in this entire movie. Yeah, well, I mean that the, they fucking earned their pay because there was glitter fucking everywhere. Exactly, in the anus. And, yeah, <laughs> you don't want in, a lot of glitter in the, in the anus. anus. <laughs> uh, which is going to be a, a, a thumbnail for this podcast. Exactly. You'll see the amazing signage that the anus uses to get <laughs> business. So, yeah, so, we're in the anus. At this point, I just have in my notes, kill me, I want to die. That's about right. That's the right tone I think they were setting. <laughs> this, okay. But, yeah, up until this point, you weren't sure... If the director just saw a poster for Star Wars and decided, well, that looks like I can make something out. I can make a pawn of that. No problem. This could have easily what? been one of the situations to where it's like the old uh, children's game of where you whisper one thing in somebody's ear. So the first guy starts out with, like, George Lucas actually had some involvement in this, I imagine. He whispered <laughs> Star Wars into somebody's ear. And then about 4,000 years later, they heard Star Babe with random yeah, it, it fucking... Went from Star Wars, and then like 10 minutes later, it was Star Wars... And then Which, somehow that turned into Star Babe. Exactly. So we're we're here now. We're here at Star Babe. We're and, here uh, at the Cantina. So we're at base. This is basically the movie is if like <laughs> the movie is like if seventy percent of a New Hope took place in the Cantina scene, which happens to be in this movie in Anus or the Anus. Yes. Excuse me. So yeah, the anus cantina. And this was when I first realized, because I didn't know going into this, I should have imagined, but I didn't know this was essentially a Star Wars parody or a Star Wars ripoff or whatever you want to call it, uh, because there was really no fucking clues to it before now. Well, I mean, there was the Wookiee. Well, it was a man in an ape suit, <laughs> but it was a but black But they monkey. call him Loogie, so Loogie, uh, Wookiee. Chewy. yeah. I... I, 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 I Looking back on it now, well, now that I actually well, put yeah, time in thought. I was like exactly the same. Like I, I, Up until that point, I was like, oh, they just saw the poster that said Star Wars and said, okay, let's make a pawn of that. Kind of what like those did that did the epic movie oh, did. God. They saw a trailer and made a movie out of that, making jokes. Uh, kind of. Uh, in quotation yeah. mark jokes. <laughs> Just in case video doesn't co come up, uh, Gail is actually putting up his fingers right now. <laughs> putting in quote signs. No, but yeah. Uh, so, yeah. But uh, so then we come to the can cantina scene, and I was like, okay, so it's not quite that they just saw the poster, it's that. A friend of the director saw Star Wars and was telling him about it after about 10 beers. Or more, but yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, they had so this scene in a bar. Just, yeah, yeah, they had a they had scene in a bar where like Han shot first. And <laughs> so he was like, yeah, I'm going to make my next porno be that. I imagine that's his accent as well. <laughs> I'm, hey, look at me. I'm fucking Jack DeNaro. I make porno. Hey, want to be in the movies? <laughs> oh, that's that kind of yeah made the hair on the back of my neck raise a bit. So yeah, <laughs> that was probably very very similar to what was going on in this scenario. 
So yeah, okay. Needless to say, we're here. We're in the anus. We're uh, we're meeting all kinds of a cast of alien characters, which uh, just like yes, Star Wars. In- yeah, includes space, you know, space werewolf who smokes cigars and plays pinball. That's what he does. And uh, my next one was, oh, hey, uh, yes, one of the uh, space babes says, hey, look over there. That's a bar fly. And it's <laughs> cut to the bar and it's an alien that literally looks like a fly at the bar. Yeah, imagine... Um, this is the level of humor we are dealing with. Yeah, and the costumes as well. Imagine uh, a Halloween, a store that specializes in Halloween gifts. Like three weeks after Halloween, where they're trying to get rid of the shit that nobody wanted, the producers bought that shit for Star Babe. <laughs> these, these costumes are, oh, let's yeah. just say, a little uh, bit cheap. And, uh, like, you're an American, Travis. Yes, sir. I'm not an American, so I'm going to defer to you and ask, is the bartender supposed to be Richard Nixon? The bartender, in fact, um, is supposed to be. There is a uh, Imagine Point Break and those amazing (laughs) president masks they had. This one was cheaper than that. Like you had to, you had to use some visualization. You had to imagine what it was. But yeah, um, I'm going to use my American rights to say yes, indeed, they were attempting uh, to have the bartender be old Tricky Dick Nixon. But I have to give them one thing: it was a better Richard Nixon than the one they had in Watchmen. I'll agree with that as well. Uh, much more entertaining, much better dialogue, and uh, in all honesty, his accent was fucking spot on. Very good. <laughs> yes, it was way better than the Nixon they had in Watchmen. The only difference is you definitely knew it was supposed to be Richard Nixon. Exactly. Even though it wasn't. Yeah, you know, yeah, you had to use a little bit of creative freedom, but yeah, that's that's initially what I got around to. So... Then we we are, we are where we go around uh, a cast of of alien bar patrons, uh, along with our two robots. <laughs> and these two robots sort of you know grab my attention because I don't know if those robots were fucking or just dancing. Well, to put this into a little bit of perspective, the two robots in question uh, pretty much look like slightly shinier Rock'em Sock'em robots. Um, they were... I mean, they were kind of like Mr. Destructoid. There we go. If, if you know that. Yeah, if you're aware of that, uh, they were very similar. And my, the- my, my, my thought process on this, because I put a lot of thought into this movie, because it, it, it's one of those ones that makes you think. Uh, um, it is. is is the robots initially were dancing. I mean, this is the anus. This is the hottest spot on planet Phallus. So naturally, uh, robots, I think, have perhaps the... even in all of Sector 69. That is a possibility. I'm not willing to go that far. I'm waiting till Star Babe 2 if we ever get it. Come <laughs> on, Jack Gennaro. We're waiting on it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, I do believe that the robots were going through a courting program to where it started off dancing. I mean, I'm sure before the Star, ba- uh, Star Babe and uh, her lovely two assistants actually got there, there probably was more courting. There was asking favorite colors, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then finally, they, they did get to dancing. However, by the end of the scene, color. it might have been Maybe a little silver. bit different. That is my favorite color, too. <laughs> Exactly, and that 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 leads to robot babies eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, that's how that's how we get robots. Exactly. If you didn't know, that's how science works, guys. So yeah, we uh, so we're there. We're looking at everything. Uh, one that I do definitely want to point out was uh, one of the main things the Cantina scene. If you remember anything at all, it was the amazing band with the very weird looking um, aliens that were a part of that band. And the anus has something quite similar, except it's one I, guy <laughs> with a very shitty ma- alien mask on uh, playing a piccolo or a flute. But he has human arms coming out of a cloak. <laughs> and um, 
I, I have in my notes, do not even fucking mention the stupid flute playing alien. <laughs> he he really captured my attention. There was something about the alien mask and then with the very long uh, Caucasian human arms that was playing. Well, it was it was it was very much a, a you know, a, a you have what we call piano fingers. It's, there you it's go. Very long, very articulated fingers. Exactly. He had those. Yeah. <laughs> Which he was the... just playing the shit out of that space oboe. Exactly. And and spoiler alert, it, he didn't get to use those long fingers on any of the star uh, star babe or compatriots. No. Which is unfortunate. No. However, the because, person that's right by know, him. <laughs> after the uh, uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, the the our heroine star babe twinkle toes and milky way yes go and have a drink and uh they the uh, pinball playing space werewolf comes over mm-hmm. and so after the sucking the cock of a gorilla suit Chewbacca scene what do we need the dresser asks himself well we need a space werewolf sex scene. Yeah. A space werewolf which communicates through both grunts and growls and the Bella Lugosi Transylvanian accent. Exactly. He's a very complex character, as we soon come to find out. He has a lot of interest. <laughs> and it's, it's totally at random which mode of communication he chooses to use. He, he can use both. He just chooses to do them both at random. He reminds me of somebody who is bilingual but got very fucked up on drugs. So occasionally <laughs> in, or a form of English, a Transylvania accent of English comes through, but there's yeah. a lot of grunts and a lot of uh, uh, howling kind of. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely sex noises. We'll put it that way. It's, it's a space werewolf's sex noises. Yes. And then a Bella Lugosi accent going, yes, yes, I like it, I like it. And that was a pretty much a perfect spot on imitation of said space werewolf. Uh, so it's at this point where we learn what our heroine's plan is to get the secret plan. Yep. It's basically to, to totally at random... Just fuck whoever. Yeah, uh, nobody and in particular. Just the, the, their plan is to fuck every single living being in the anus bar until they stumble on the guy that has the plans for the Death Star, or whatever. Exactly. So, um, so yeah. Needless to say, they they could have picked it random, but it seemed like there was a little bit of there was a little bit of luck on their side for this one because. The space werewolf originally thought Star Babe was a prostitute, and that's why he pulled her up to have sex with her. Which, in all honesty, she... In his defense, yeah. she did not reject that image. No, not at all. She didn't accept Entirely. any money, but everything else, yeah, was pretty much right out there on Front Street. And, yeah, so, of course, our other two lovely ladies have to have other sex partners... Which are, well, one is his flute playing alien's friend, yeah. Elephant Man, after he joined the Blue Man group. That's exactly and what it sounds o- like. <laughs> and the other one is David, David, is Devil David Carradine. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's pretty accurate as well. <laughs> it's, uh,. And- because, yeah, I mean, honestly, while, while, I mean, the whole thing is who could possibly have the microfilm or whatever like that? It's, it's going to be who's banging Star Bay, but we'll get back to that. So, yeah, we need to, we need to fill time with the other two lovely ladies, Miss uh, <clears throat> Twinkle Toes and Milky Way. So they have to find somebody just in case they happen to have the secret plans hidden somewhere on their person. Yes, on their naked person, of course. But, of course, that's the only way you could find it. So, like, at this, it's it's like 37 minutes in, and all we have seen is oral sex. Yes. And, like, I was thinking, like, it was all porn in the 70s this monotonous? 
<sighs> but then, yeah, at at thirty may eight minutes in, thirty eight minutes in, and this is just barely over an hour film. Yep, we we get our first com shot. Yep, it took a which, while. It it definitely took a while, and I was quite surprised because we had a dick sucking scene earlier, which didn't end in a cum shot. So I was quite unprepared for this one, but there is a plot element to it. Mm-hmm. So Dave, the Devil David Carradine comes over, let's say Milky Way, because it's either one of those two, and the movie doesn't care. Yes. So it comes he comes over Milky Way and that poisons her in such a way that she gets drowsy from the from the poison cum. Yep. And is then bumped night at the Roxbury style between a pirate and a penguin. Yep. Uh it does or, happen. Well should I say rather a pirate and a man in a penguin suit. Yes, and which actually the penguin suit was the most convincing suit in the entire movie. And then for no reason, no reason at all, the pirate breaks a bottle over Milky Way's head. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is, in space, they've gotten rid of roofies, so they needed something new. Alien cum mixed with bottle over the head, that is the new roofies in uh, 2100. (laughs) Which brings us to the fact that there is an actual stormtrooper mask into this in this movie. Yep. <laughs> this was at the point in time where it was just like, yep, I know that what this is now. <laughs> I wasn't 100% okay, so, sure. Uh, at least someone on set saw the actual Star Wars film mm. at this point. I think it's it's hard to hard to argue otherwise. This was like a first edition Stormtrooper helmet that had to have come out that same Halloween or before it because it wasn't high quality, but it was well, it was uh, better than most. No, I, th- I think I think it was like actually made from the actual cast. That is a possibility. Like could have been the same guys. It was. It was. Yeah, because like he up the uh, special uh, the uh, costuming guy apparently started after the movie started making like bootleg copies of the masks. Nice. And and the full suits and just selling to like rabid fans, which George Lucas did not take kindly to. Let me tell you, I can imagine. So yeah, um, so yeah. Needless to say, yeah. This but is anyway. One. This is yeah. The, the, so he has one of them has a replica stormtrooper mask or helmet on, but the rest is just a white cloak. Yep. And following him is. A person that I can only describe as discount Darth Vader. This is dollar store Darth Vader by far. This is a so people did see the stormtroopers before making this movie. They didn't see Darth Vader before making this movie. Well, they did see him and say, "We can make that. That's too expensive. We'll make something close enough." So, like, you know, you've seen like the movie Spaceballs, of course. When they had the character of Dark Helmet. Played by the amazing Rick Moranis, yes, sir. Yeah, but, so, like, imagine Darth Vader, imagine Dark Helmet, and just mush those two up in the most shittiest fashion you can get, and you have our movie's version of Darth Vader. That's that's very fair. A very large helmet with a very odd detail. So, yeah, I, I'll give that to you. So they kidnap, uh, what are we calling her, Milky Way. Yeah, we'll go with that. So they kidnap Milky Way, and nobody has an issue with it. Mm. Just two guys walk into a bar and pick up a a passed out chick. Well, that's what they do with the anus. I mean, on Planet Phallus, the anus is the place to go for. The, The Planet Phallus is a very hard place. Yep. Not for the week week of will or skill. <laughs> so we have our first actual penetration 39 minutes into the film. Exactly, cuz they couldn't Which, wait till 69. Like I I am I admire a bit of restraint on on the behalf of porno. I have to admit I I like 
being teased a bit. I, I, I want to want it before I want it. That's understandable. Or like I yes I I I want to want it before I see it, which, considering modern modern porno, they have no respect for the element of suspense. They don't respect the classics like Star Babe. <laughs> they don't respect <laughs> anything, <laughs> or Star Babe does neither. Well, of course. But yes, but thirty nine minutes in, that's a bit too much, I think. You well, got three blowjobs in that meantime, yeah. and three blowjobs and lady oral sex. Of course. It, can you call lady oral sex a blowjob? Um, if you're hard-pressed, I think you could. However, what they did with the camera there, I would call it an oral inspection. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so this is the scene between Star Babe and the Space Werewolf. Yep. Which... That's where we get our first penetration shot. Mm -hmm. And accompanying this penetration shot is the is like the soundtrack takes a very weird <laughs> turn. It's it, you, you it's it's like you've seen Dawn of the Dead. Oh yeah. That has a very famous song uh which is Dawn on a Xylophone. By a band called the Goblins. It's it's a very iconic song. It's the uh, end credits song to Robot Chicken, even. Very good. So, the song for this scene they went for for our first penetration sex scene is a third rate Goblins cover band. Yep, I can see that. Which is just wacky xylophone music combined with a woman moaning. And a man doing a werewolf sounds, and I like it. I like it a lot. It was almost. It was. It re was reminiscent of something like Benny Hill, just to where it was. The music was almost intentionally comedic, even though the scene wasn't setting up that atmosphere necessarily. It is the most bizarre soundscape I have ever heard, and I've heard some weird shit, man. <laughs> But yeah, so needless okay. to say, we got we got a little bit of a, a vaginal penetration going on, uh, which uh, yeah, we had finally have that, and we're then we are at the halfway point in the movie, which we can't overlook. Just like earlier, within the uh, man in the gorilla suit having a very obviously Caucasian penis, we have this dark-haired werewolf man who uh, also has a very hairless, uh, for a werewolf especially, uh, Caucasian penis. Uh, that comes out of a hole in uh, his suit, <laughs> pretty much. His first suit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which, you know, that's kind of how it works, I suppose. I haven't met too many werewolves in real life, but I I'd have to imagine that's how it works in real life. Let alone space werewolves. That's true. I'm hoping. One of these days. So, we're more than halfway done with the movie, and all that our heroes have accomplished is, on the one hand, fuck random dudes who don't have any information pertinent to the mission, yep. and on the other hand, one of them has managed to get themselves kidnapped by the bad guys. Yep. Which, if you're going to get kidnapped then, by bad guys, you might, it might as well be a stormtrooper and discount Darth Vader. Yes, and remember when I said the movie could get darker... Much darker. It gets really dark. Cause yeah, so Discount point. Darth Vader and the Stormtrooper take uh, Milky Way to a barn. Because somewhere the anus has a barn. <laughs> I mean... Yes, we learned that later that this is actually just the anus's back room, which is a barn. Full of hay. For some reason. And older, old wood and... Yeah, it's it, it's what you would imagine a barn would be like. It's what you would imagine the back room of a barn would look like, except not at all. Exactly. So, then they just flat out fucking rape her. Yeah, there's just, not really any way of reading through that to where it's like, oh, well, maybe it was, maybe it was consensual. No, maybe it was, um, yeah, they no, just. She's, they, she's fucking out of this world on Alien Come yeah, and just discount Darth Vader sticks his dick in her mouth. Yeah, 
which to me is not the most effective courting ritual. I think the robots did it better by dancing first. <laughs> um, but yeah, pretty much at this point in time. Now, given this was a different time back in the seventies, everything like that. I don't no, think. No, like, 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 let's uh, let's like flat, lay flat out and just acknowledge that this was porn rape. The kind of rape which doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> yeah, well, theoretically, the, these poor yeah, girls it's might It's rape. It's, it's not with consent, but they don't really care. So who? no harm, no foul. Exactly. But it was definitely disconcerting at the time. It was... It was very, very uncomfortable. I'm not going to lie. It was terrible. Because they didn't have it set up to where this was supposed to be like a very fearful or very scary scene or something like that. Like, oh, no, God, she has to deal with this. this was just a pawn. Yeah, this was just another sex scene to where it was just like, okay, well, Discount Darth Vader's going to stick his dick in your mouth. And uh, really just Stormtrooper in a cloak's going to have his way on the other side. And yeah, they uh, have a spit roast. Yeah. So, yeah, needless to say, this is a... Uh, at this point in time, maybe at the time they thought nothing of it. It's like, oh, people are just happy to see a Star Wars reference. No, nah, this is just where it gets really bad and just, well, oh, bad yeah. perspective. Um, so yeah, needless to say, now that we are watching, uh, yeah, Darth Vader on the front end, uh, Stormtrooper on the back end, and uh, I mean, there's no screaming or I'm yelling. I'm spit roast. Yep. Um, so yeah, now now we get into the what you would imagine a dramatic element of this movie would come. Like this woman's being taken advantage of by these space aliens who happen to look like something from a franchise. Um, but no, uh, it, it goes nowhere. It, it's just a sex scene. It goes it nowhere. She just she just accepts it. Yeah, she and just... and likes it. Because this is porn, that's how porn works. Exactly. I guess it's kind of like the old saying, when in Rome, but in this case, when in the anus, the, these are the things that you do and that you should expect. When in porn, do as porn does. Exactly. And that is, rape doesn't exist. Yeah. Yay? So on so, to the next scene. But <laughs> after, no, but like, if I had to say one good thing about the movie Star Babe, it's that the sex scenes never last for more than 10 minutes. Yeah, these are it's kind of strange. Because at the time, I mean, I watched a lot of porn slash movies from the time around the late 70s, early 80s. They were usually a lot more story, uh, story focused, but then they would go on to these like 30 minute sex scenes and everything like that, where it was the majority of the film was fucking. Not so much with Star Babe. No, that's that's this movie has severe case of ADD. Yeah, just as soon as the sex warms up, uh, rather that be consensual or we otherwise, to do something else, and in this case, we go from raping uh, Milky Way by Discount Darth Vader and Star Babe to uh, Milky Way. No, no, to Twinkle, Twinkle Toes. Twinkle Toes. Yep. Fucking the Elephant Man, Blue Man group. For which, for God. some reason, she brings onto the ship, their own ship, to which they're there to do reconnaissance. They're trying to find out what evil person is trying to do things. But fuck it, let's bring them on the ship to fuck them because we've we've got this set already set up. So we gotta have somebody. He fucking seems it. like a trustworthy guy. Yeah, when a guy is all blue and the face almost looks a little bit like a vagina, yeah, I trust him entirely. Yeah, I mean, you know. So, I I have in my notes. I never wanted to see Darth Vader come. <laughs> now I have. Well, I can't say that I've never wanted to see him come. I just wanted to see him come in a better movie than this. <laughs> <laughs> like a much better Star I'm, Wars for Barry. I'm perfectly fine with never seeing Darth Vader come. Just well, perfectly fine with that. Well, too late now. <laughs> So, like, we, we cut back to our titular character, who has been fucking space werewolf Bella Lugosi for 20 minutes. Exactly. Well, in, in their time. In ours, we've gotten maybe about three or four minutes of it. No, no, no. Like, like in our time, it has been 20 minutes since they started fucking till now. Oh, yeah, they've just cut away since then. They've cut away and done other stuff. But for 20 minutes of the movie 
measly 60 minute running time or 64 i think yeah 64 minutes we've yes that is all our titular character has done she has landed the ship on phallus yep and fucked space werewolf bella lugosi exactly so in this scene they are doing the sec the the 69 in sector 69 well, so it's kind of. uh, a 69 usually implies rather male, female, male on male, female, female on female, that there are uh, standard genitals going into each other's mouth. And, um, and that's that's the thing that I was so confused about is that I didn't know if she was rimming Space Werewolf Bella Lugosi or if Space Werewolf Bella Lugosi was supposed to be a hermaphrodite. And in with all honesty... Both, with, with penis, vagina, and butthole. All uh, going. I mean, I, he's an alien. You don't know. Exactly. And that's the whole thing. That I, at that point in time, my first thought, obviously, because there was a hole, another hole, cut out of the suit, um, this time placed around the anus area. Um, so my first, my first thought was, okay, some ass eating. That's something you don't normally see in pornos from this time, but I'll go with it. And on further inspection, yeah, I do believe that star babe, um, are, as I said, uh, such an amazing heroine for the modern age, uh, was going to town on space werewolf's anus, um, for pleasure. Yeah, in retrospect, I, I have to agree that it probably was just, just a rimming, but you know, the other option is very fascinating. I, I would prefer to, to see that, in all honesty. As I said, once again, Jack Gennaro, listen up, buddy. We've got the whole plot for Space Babe 2. But no, oddly enough, uh, a man rimming a uh, werewolf, space werewolf, it was not the most disturbing part of this scene. The most disturbing part was when they went to the other side of the 69. And that was... Uh, Space Werewolf Face, uh, down by the vagina, as you would imagine, in a 69. But um, Space Werewolf also does have... It's not just a mask on. He's got a full body suit going on. So with the mask, he also has these massive uh, glove claws. Uh, like well, you would it's expect. basically like latex gloves with, with claws on the end. Yeah. Um, so as you can imagine what he's doing with that, although, cause the face is frozen, the face, he can't actually articulate or anything like that. It's totally frozen the way it is. So he wouldn't really be able to appropriately have oral sex with space babe. So instead of that, he decides to use what he has access to, which is his clawed hand to penetrate yes. space babe. And they do it very Ooh, slowly. Both. Both both penetrate and stimulate the clitoris. Yeah, he, he was a very caring space werewolf. I did see that. He didn't go straight for the vagina uh, or for the vulva opening. He did, in fact, yeah. uh, spend some time around the clit. He is, although possibly a horrible, horrible man, he does care about how Space Babe feels at the time. For that, I applaud him. I mean, you know, she was taking care of him, so... Exactly. So, yeah, so needless to say, seeing, even if they were just latex, seeing massive, big, almost bare looking paws being inserted and taken out of a, a poor woman's uh, baby hole, it, uh, it, it was a bit uh, odd. But you would think that would be the most odd thing, but nope, it wasn't actually, because they cut back to Star Babe and see what she's up to. And uh, what was she doing exactly there? <laughs> there you go. Uh, she, she was uh, giving him a rim job, mm -hmm. uh, but she found something. As there. you do when you're eating somebody's ass out. That is uncomfortably true. Yeah. <laughs> But in this situation, um, let's actually, uh, by this time, I totally have forgotten the plot. I was just like, oh, I'm, al I'm along for the ride, no problem. What Star Babe and Milky Way and Twinkle Toes were looking for were some secret plans. That's the whole reason they went to Planet Phallus. So where and could they possibly Starbabe. found? Oh, Star Babe, yep. she pulls the plans literally out of Space Werewolf's ass. He, he kept it literally. there for safekeeping. Literally, 
out of his ass. Pulls yeah. it. Slowly. Literally. Yeah. It was a... Uh... It was in a, uh, I would say, a tampon or a very small, cheap vibrator that was sticking, protruding out of his ass. Uh, that I she think did it was remember. like, uh, I think it was like a, uh, you know how you used to have analog film, mm-hmm. not or analog cameras, not digital cameras. Yes. And the film came in these little containers. It was basically that. Yeah. Or... A miniaturized, miniaturized version of that, so maybe a microfilm container. Yeah, I can agree with that. So, needless to say... So she pulls that out of his ass. While he's still going to town on the other side of her. She, he, yeah, he doesn't none notice of, anything. No, it just happened to slip out of his ass. It, things like that happen when you're a space werewolf. But yeah, we can't. So yeah, she gets the secret plans for some reason. Just knows that this tiny black capsule is the uh, is the evil plan. Mm-hmm. Although it's in a language so she, she qui- can't understand. Yep. She quickly just gets dressed and says, "Thanks for the very lovely evening, space werewolf." And um, I will see you momentarily. Exactly. And and she was very respectful as she uh, made her exit. So yeah, needless to say, at this point in time, we have we have found what our what our amazing heroines were looking for. We have the secret plans. So, but unfortunately, one is still being captured by the bad guys. Well, when you say captured, yeah, let's use yeah, let's use captured instead of rape from now on. <laughs> captured. Yeah, I mean, she didn't say no. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. This is very uncomfortable. Exactly. I'm just going to say captured and just f- forget that anything ever happened. That's a good idea. <laughs> so, getting past that, um So yeah, so she, like after coming all over, discount Darth Vader and, and the Stormtrooper just both pass out because mm-hmm. it was such great sex. Yeah. It was, uh, it was highly, highly um, relaxing what they did, so naturally. So, yeah, they pass out, and she goes and gets her communicator to contact Lugie. Mm-hmm. The uh, stand-in Chewbacca man in the gorilla suit. If you're keeping up with it, he's the one who got a blue job earlier without a cup. Yes, who who is is very white, who is very much a white man in a gorilla costume, talking like a black guy. A stereotypical black guy from the seventies, definitely. This is so racist. It's very racist. Like Listen. I come from a country where like ninety nine percent of people are white. But goddamn, is this racist? Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, the whole thing is you can't just have a movie with rather rape or racism. It has to really have both, I think. So, okay. Uh, they got, they um, apparently got what they came for and decided to get off the planet. Yep. Which is a good idea. So, you know, they go back to the ship and they find fucking Twinkle, twinkle toes. toes there. With with Elephant Man, Blue Man Group, mm-hmm. they tell Elephant, they tell Blue Man Group, Elephant Man to fuck right off. Yeah, and just Luke, he just tosses him off. Yeah, had no real drama or anything. It was just hey, get so out of here and they just yeah they just get. I mean, I mean, I think like Twinkle Toes had the fucking easiest time. Yeah, she didn't have to do anything. She just fucked an alien. Pretty much. I mean, she wasn't taken advantage of. She didn't have to eat anybody's ass. It was just simply, go have sex with this dude on the spaceship, and then eventually... Which you know, and, like, it's not uncomfortable for you in any way. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, yeah, finally we have all of our, our all of our vixens back on the spaceship orgasm, but they need <sighs> to find out. Uh, they did, in fact, find... The secret plans in Space Werewolf's anus, but now well, I, 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 I want to talk about this scene. So, okay. so they 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 decide to get off Planet Phallus, mm-hmm. and this is this is represented 
through stock footage of some Apollo mission taking off, even though it has already been established that the Starship orgasm does not look anything like an Apollo rocket taking yeah. off. But they could steal that footage, so they did. And they escape the planned phallus, and they talk about their mission. Yep. And so, uh, Milky Way, who got double teamed by Discount Darth Vader and the Stormtrooper, yep. as Twinkle Toes. So, did you get the secret documents? To which Twinkle Toes replies... Gosh, I forgot all about it. Which, in all honesty, if you're being molested... I mean, come on, she just <laughs> got fucking raped. Yeah, that's not And then fair. I'm like, I'm sorry I couldn't give a shit about you and what happened to you. I just forgot. Yeah, she's going to need counseling for quite a few years. But no, they're worried about the fucking secret plans. But... And they, I have to point out, they call her Star Baby like half the time. They do, for no apparent reason. <laughs> it's like, Star Babe, Star Baby, whatever. Star yeah. something, I don't exactly. give a shit. Yeah, they stopped caring a long time ago. <laughs> and so they contact their superior, <laughs> whose name... Captain Marvelous. Captain uh, Marvelous, whose costume <laughs> is a yellow unitard with yep. a cape, mm -hmm. and the words Captain Awesome on the chest. Yep. And in between the words Captain and Awesome is a picture of Captain America. Yep. So and now this guy looks like, if you think. Hmm, I wonder what 70s porn actors, male porn actors, would look like. You get this guy. Oh, yeah, this guy was definitely as stereotypical as you can get. I mean, kind he of... Looks the, like, he looks like Danny Sexbank without being funny. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, he had the feathered hair, uh, the pseudo-mullet. Um, yeah, I mean, he was what you imagine when you imagine a male porn star from the 70s. So, yeah, so they contact him, and he's like, uh, run the secret plans through the translator machine. And they do that, and they find out what the evil secret plan is. Oh, yeah. Which is that, <laughs> that they are going to launch a uranium bombardment plutonium sperm missile. Mm-hmm. I think ISIS that, has those. That that are actual words said in this movie. <laughs> yeah, so we have to worry about a very large rocket that is has a lot of semen in it. Which which the plan is to impregnate every woman in New York City. Mm -hmm. Which that's the city you would go for if you were going to hit Earth with a sperm cannon. Oh, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I would go for something, I don't know, probably Beijing. Beijing, you'll definitely get the most people, but I think you'll get the most influential people if you hit New York. <laughs> okay. So, yes. So, they launch, they are going to launch a, a uranium bombardment of plutonium spur missiles. It's a spark rocket. And so they have to stop the sperm missile. And, like, it's done. Like, the, okay, so you, um, uh, you remember the trench run from the original Star Wars. As everyone does. Very iconic. Iconic scene. Now, take away any budget mm -hmm. out of that scene, any excitement out of that scene, yep. any filmmaking talent out of that scene, and replace it with completely with just analog computer displays from the 70s and then a big dildo mm -hmm. covered in dripping glitter cum. Yep. The best kind, honestly. That's what, like, this is their <laughs> trench run. This is their, like, that scene. Yeah, their version. And Definitely. They see the big dildo covered in glitter cum 
and they have the best line, <laughs> which is, it's so beautiful. Because <laughs> that's what you say whenever pretty much when all of New York is... glitter come. Yes, because that's... Yeah, go on. <laughs> anyway, so Space Babe, Space Baby, whatever you like. Yep. Twinkle Toes and Milky Way. Um, they have to do. They have to press a button, I guess. Within a within like, an allotted amount of time, and that's where well, uh, yeah, the, important the, things come the in. The audio at this part was especially bad. Yes, and it was the most dialogue heavy <laughs> uh, scene. So, but yes, so they had to like shoot some sort of condom on the penis missile or yes, something. Sir. Yep. Uh like I was I was checked out at this point. <laughs> but yes, so they have to like push the red button and then get away in sixty nine seconds time. Yep. I don't remember if it was sixty nine, but it probably fucking was. If it wasn't it should have been. And <laughs> they actually used the stopwatch on the fucking console to measure that time. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, digital time just isn't reliable. Not in 2100. You really need to go with something that's tried and true, something that's been used even in the Olympics for thousands of years, a stopwatch. Or hundreds. Hundreds, whatever. I mean, this is 2100, so think back. Uh, yeah, oh, we'll go hundreds. Not, not probably not thousands. <laughs> Eh, this is this is Star Given Babe the, world. <laughs> Given the, that the watch was invented way past one thousand, I'll take your word for it. So, <laughs> anyway, yes. So okay. So yes, they've stopped the sperm missile, and mm-hmm. they have saved the galaxy, or at least New York City. Yeah, whatever. that's yeah, that's what's important. It's basically the same thing as far as these producers are concerned. Exactly. And so you like you remember the end of, of A New Hope when they had the big ceremony, everybody got the medallions and you know, Oh yeah. Absolutely amazing it was scene. A amazing scene. You would imagine some they, they they would try for something like that. Do you think so? Nope. <laughs> no, no. Captain Marvelous comes aboard their spaceship because we can't build another sat. No, we've already spent way too much money. And, um, yeah, so he comes on board and gives them a plaque. And as their commanding officer, Captain Marvelous, says, well, it's time for the real reward. What could it be? I mean, you would think... Rather- Travis, I want you to take a legitimate guess. They have fucked five people. Aliens and animals, yes. What is their reward for all that fucking? Oh, man. I'd have to imagine. I mean, they have traveled through uh, the solar system, past the solar system. Um, I would say... all of Sector 69. Exactly. That's a really big sector. Um, I'm thinking millions of dollars. Millions of dollars, a nice car... Um, maybe even like a, a, a big screen TV. Is that it? Even their own planet. Oh, yeah, that would be nice as well. Nope. They get a fucking. Of course. So the reward for fucking a bunch of guys and saving the galaxy is f- all three of them fuck Captain Marvelous at the same time. Well, we can't forget Captain Marvelous also did give them something else more than money could even explain. He gave them this amazing plaque that they never even showed to the camera. <laughs> it was a plaque for their good deeds to where it was pretty much it was just a piece of rock or something like that that he never even like, like it, kind of it, it was it was some like they took like a fishing trophy off some guy and just took the fish off pretty much. Yeah, it was just the yeah. bottom half. Yeah. Here, here is a plaque. But I have to say, to its credit, it's the best pornographic scene 
in the film and the only one that even managed to give me a chub. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. It, it's all three ladies and Captain Marvelous. It's three ladies and one dude, and the like. The dude, is, I mean, he does look very stereotypically seventies porno, but he gets the job done exactly in more than one way. I mean, the whole thing is, if we could say a lot about Star Babe, but one of the most important things is this movie gave us two different analinga scenes. There was two different scenes where a woman was eating out of man, well, out of man's asshole and a space werewolf's asshole. And that's, so that's something. It was really a trailblazer. If you think about it for its time, I believe so. I think they've really just, just pushed it, both in cinema form as well as in porn form uh, for us to be where we're at now. And uh, the amazing porn and uh, movies we have now. So, yes, we have prolapsed anus porn because of Star Babe. Exactly. Because I can, I can think of nothing else that would create something as disgusting and sexy at the same time. Exactly. So, everybody, make sure you're right and thanks, Star Babe. In fact, uh, I was trying to look up to see if Jack Gennaro, the director, was still alive. I really did want to tweet him or something like that or maybe send this to him afterwards or even have him on for an interview. But it is impossible to find out anything about this movie or the people who are in it. Well, I mean, it's it's porn made in New York in 1977. No, like they they knew how to cover their tracks if they ever got legitimate work sometime. Yeah, which uh, is a possibility. I mean, definitely all the ladies. I mean, going into it, we have uh, playing as Milky Way, we had Christine Kelly, which could be her real name, but I doubt it. Uh, Twinkle Toes was played by the amazing Cindy Lynn, which, once again... That is not not. a real name. And if, let's see here, and Star Babe, our main character was Tommy LaRue, which uh yeah, ten bucks is saying that is not a real name at all. But was, uh oh. and then of course Tyler Reynolds playing the amazing Captain Marvelous as well, as I did not realize this till the end, but he was also the bartender in the anus. Which he was uncredited <laughs> for. So he put in a lot of work to make sure this movie was just as good as it could possibly be. He was rich. <laughs> He was indeed Richard Nixon. <laughs> so we got a. I hope he got paid very well for that. Which come to find I'm, out, I'm sure he was one of the most paid people involved with his film. Exactly, because he actually went on to do quite a few movies after that. Just clicked on his IMDb. He's an actor of 57 movies. And just scrolling through, yeah, this is all porn. This is all porn. <laughs> Every last bit of it. Like, I mean, the guy fucking looked the part. <coughs> yeah, when God he's gives like you a, lemons. He's like, a sleazy, he's like a sleazy John Travolta. Uh, Well... He's kind of on par with John Travolta. <laughs> I mean, he didn't do Grease, True. but he probably John, could have. John Travolta is pretty sleazy to begin with. Exactly. So, yeah, that um, in a nutshell, that was Star Babe. Yes, uh, that wraps up uh, the, the grotesque film Star <laughs> Babe. It was... Uh, yes, like, like I said in the beginning... This grotesque was supposed to be a play on words. It was not actually be supposed to be grotesque cinema or something. It was supposed to be like the original meaning of the word, which was like from the earth or from a cave or <laughs> something like No, we just start out just pretty fucking vile shit. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, but, disgusting cinema could have worked in this scenario as well. But, yes. but uh, disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, uh, for the most part, yeah, this is uh, this is kind of what you're going to get. You're going to find weird fucking movies that, as I said, nobody should really watch. We're doing this. We're masochist. We're doing this for you. Well, we uh, just love. Like, okay, Star Babe. That was a fluke. I. I watched it just because I had to, but 
<laughs> Normally, the more we are supposed to do is just weird but fun shit, not exactly. weird and terrible shit. And we've actually got a really fun one lined up for next week. Uh, you want to intro that week one? It's going to be great. So, you know the actor. Corey Feldman. Everybody does. He was in Goonies. He was in Stand By Me. He was, he in, was the in some amazing movies. He was in the Goonies, and he's a weird, creepy adult baby now. Yes. Uh, but in 2003, I think it was. Uh, 2004, I believe. 2004. He did... Uh, have you ever wondered what... Corey Feldman saw the snake impersonation is. I haven't um, up until I saw the movie that we're watching for next week. And uh, so, have you ever won? So, <clears throat> if you thought, okay, so Corey Feldman is going to do a solid snake impression, I wonder what his hair is going to look like. I, if I had to imagine, I would say wig like. So, like, take a look, Google Beethoven. Oh, that's good. A yeah. wig like that. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, that's we pretty accurate. To, we are going to watch the, uh, because we have already spoken about Full Moon features, we're going to watch the only movie in the Puppet Master series and the Demonic Toy series that is not, that is not touched by Full Moon Productions, features, etc. Mm -hmm. This is the film, 2004, Demo Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys. Exactly. Starring Corey Feldman and produced by the Sci Fi Channel. Yep, so you know you got quality there with those two involved. From the people who brought you Sharknado. And yeah, Corey Feldman, which was friends with Michael Jackson. So yeah, that'll give you a little bit of an idea where we're this coming was from. Like, to be fair to Corey, this was before his full on Jackson phase. Like, he was still somewhat human-looking at this point in time. A little bit. But that's... A little uh, bit. <laughs> but I Way think... more than he is today. <laughs> yeah, I saw him in real life two years ago. We'll go into that uh, next week, though. Where we are going yes, to be covering... Week. So, uh, we are going to be covering... Demonic Toys, or excuse me, Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys. Absolutely amazing battle royale of puppets and toys. So, Travis, where can people find your stuff? We we got to do plugs because that's how podcasts work. I suppose that's how it works. Um, pretty we, much go. We, we don't want to get we don't want to get arrested by the podcast police. <laughs> pretty much, uh, I exist on the internet in so many places, but the best place to find me is over at Shattered dot Media, not ShatteredMedia dot com, but Shattered Period Media. Go over there. This is the same place you're going to find this damn podcast. You listen to the podcast. How have you not looked me up yet? I do funny videos on the internet, and uh, or at least I pretend that they're funny. Uh, but yeah, check me out over there, or uh, you can hit me up on Twitter, which I never check, at at T. McKeithen. If you don't know how to spell it, you'll figure it out. And yourself, Igel. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, my article, my first article is going to debut on Chat Media uh, probably shortly or before this episode goes up. Uh, uh, it's called Mortal Kombat X, uh, Mortal Kombat X's. Or isn't that how you would say that? Uh, English is not my first language. I understand. Uh, so well, you're pluralizing. Um, yeah, Mortal Kombat Mortal, X's. Mortal Kombat X's plotline is a hot mess, <laughs> which um, is now on uh, at the time of this recording about three thousand words and getting larger by the ha by the hour. <laughs> uh, which I'm going to uh, take apart the uh, storyline for Mortal Kombat 10, uh, and it's just fucking terrible, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> and look for that on Shadow Media. Otherwise, you can follow my various Twitter exploits at uh, at A Atlant or E G I double L A N D. Because nobody's going to know how to spell my name. <laughs> we'll put everything in the uh, notes afterwards just to make everything Probably. a little bit easier. 
But yes, uh, please look forward to my article. I've spent a l- way much more time and thought and effort on it than anybody should think about fighting game plot lines. <laughs> so just to make me feel somewhat validated for my terrible turn of insanity, please check that out. And make sure you leave, leave nice comments or at least ones uh, insulting properly. Yes, and uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes, please shout us a review for the Shattered Media Podcast family. Exactly. We're new, and uh, we're looking to uh, bring some pretty cool stuff here. So I hope you have enjoyed yourself. I know I have. Eagle, have you had a good time? I called you Eagle. I had I had a terrible time watching Star Babe, but I had a good time talking about it. There we go. So until... And yes, all, uh, before you say anything, I know that my accent is possibly all over the place. It is, but it's but quite all right. That is... That is just because I am both drinking and I'm Icelandic. I'm sorry. No, that's quite all right. You don't have to apologize for being Icelandic yet. Maybe soon. We'll find a movie from Iceland to make fun of. Uh, But yeah, everybody, ladies and ghouls, you have been watching Cinema Grotesque. Look forward to next week. Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys. Everybody have a nice night. Goodbye.